thing we want you to do is be out there crushing them. So you get a few great big watermelons. We want lots of great big watermelons. More tonnage. We want those kind of things. By the way, we also want them sweeter. A healthier plant, sweeter. Okay. Any case, so if you go through that and you say to me, all right, Randall, what does that mean in terms of acreage? I've done the math for you. I have a little note here. Watermelon is what you're talking about is 5.4 ounces, roughly 5.5 ounces of blossom per acre. Nobody's doing anything in those kind of numbers to get the kind of results that we're talking about that we've seen in the Turkish farms. None. Nobody. Obviously, we can take this down through nut production, apricots, pears, strawberries, just straight vines in the case of you're talking about grapes, corns, peanuts, soybeans. There's all sorts of crops we've listed here for you to take it through. I do want to do one more thing, and that is go through lawns, because I think people are concerned about where is your kid playing, where is your dog, your pet rolling around, where are you out there kicking the soccer ball with the, the, the family or the neighborhood kids. The most competent way to put this on is I found through a a sprayer, a hand sprayer. I won't mention the name, it starts with O, but it begins, it's a plastic sprayer. You put this in, it sucks out of the bottom, unlike a sprayer that begins with M. It works and obviously goes forward, or with our friends in the fertilizer business. What we want to make sure we do is that we have the settings, it's listed in here, settings for how to make that happen. The bottom line is you go out there and you water your lawn. You water your lawn. And what you're talking about, watering lawn, is basically two tablespoons, or what I'm going to call one to one and a half ounces, uh, in a hose end, that hose end attachment, and there will go 15 to 20 days. That's basically once a month. There's a little interval in there. But if you're watering your yard, it's just as easy to go out there and do it that time. Once a month, kind of, maybe one, once every two, or twice every two months, twice every month, depending on how the water's coming. Remember, I'm not an advocate of watering your yard. In the heat of summer up my way, I have the brownish yard in captivity. I refuse to water that yard, which will survive. It goes dormant if we have a drought. Now, Mother Nature gives it fine. But I do water my roses. And I do make sure that my flowers and my vegetables that feed my family and my herbs and all, that they're watered. Because they'll go. They'll be done. Yards can come back. Big trees will stand by. I'm not saying you should go out there and stand and put a hose on your big tree, particularly in times of drought. But if you're going to be watering, you might as well do it economically rather than Whirly birds spread on there, pelletized, more petrochemicals, more toxic, and lo and behold, oh, we're going to do it in the face of the rainstorm, and it rains cats and dogs, and guess what? See you later. Those pellets are now out in the gutter, running down to the stream, and a few of them wash up on the sides, and all oh, the veget Well, we went there. Let's not go there. Let's not do that. Let's look at saying, hey, let's leaf feed our lawns. Let's get it immediately active. Let's not pollute the groundwater. Let's not pollute the stream. Let's make our yard nice and green. That's how you want to do that. So we're talking about very low rates. And again, that's in there. By the way, these are all on the label. So that as you buy this, as you start to get product in, yes, we have sheets available. We're happy to give you more today. We're happy to meet with you at times. We can answer on the phone. I'll give you a website in a little bit. But the point is, we're here to help you go. But we know that doing it this way is much safer, much more friendly, and the results are so much better. Okay. So we're going to skip right along now to the economics. We talked about, for your purposes, particularly as growers, as major use users, we're talking about a situation where you're talking about $80 a liter. Does this cost $80 a liter? No, it doesn't. This costs $80 a liter. You break it down, we talked about bigger quantities, there's slight reductions. We talked about lesser quantities, it's slightly on a per ounce basis more. But very, very cost effective. By the way, on that lawn treatment, I didn't really go through the mathematics on that, but the average 10,000 square foot lawn is being fertilized with a commercially available fertilizer, depending where you buy it, anywhere from 13 to about $18. That's non-organic. Organic ones, anywhere from about 24 to about $35. All right, for that 10,000. This 10,000, round number is eight bucks. Depends if you buy it this way. Depends if you buy bigger. There's some fluctuation. But for round numbers, like we use the others, around eight dollars. Now, are you putting it down a few more times? Yeah. But you know what? 16, I'll take the low figure. Eight, I put this up here down a minimum of four times. Some people suggest five if you feed in the fall for root development. If I did this five times, Five sixteens are eighty dollars. Thank you. If I did this down here at eight dollars times five is forty dollars. 
I could do this more times to have more activity and still save money. And what am I doing with water conservation? What am I doing with environmental pollution? And what am I doing with the health of my kids that are playing in this? Oh my gosh. I mean, that's a huge differential. You start to see where I'm at. So there is economic advantages in here. Yeah, you're going to have a green lawn. Yeah, you're going to save some dollars. But you're going to have a healthy lawn. You're going to have a healthy child. A dog is not rolling around some petrochemical. You see my point. Okay. Now, um, what I'd like to talk about next a little bit is this factor that we're talking about, the environmental friendly. And we've been touching on this as we went. This idea of the environmental friendliness. We went through the cautions. We went through the fact that, no, you wouldn't pick this up and drink it or wash your hands with it. Yeah, you'd put glasses on probably when you're putting it in your big tank boom sprayer after you did the mathematics. No, you wouldn't drink this. Yes, you would put it on your product. Well, Randall, I fertilized yesterday and my plants are ripe today, ready to harvest. Well, number one, why are you fertilizing them two or three or four or five or even a week or so before you're ready to harvest? I say you wouldn't do that. I see a lot of head shake them. No, I wouldn't do that. And you wouldn't either. I wouldn't. No. So obviously, that's an important part. We talked originally about the fact that, you know, whether we're agriculture oriented as farmers, growing crops for production and sale in whatever market, whether we're homeowners and we're growing grass and flowers for printing, whether we have vegetables or herbs we're growing for our own consumption or for the neighbors or maybe a little fruit stand, you know, outside our house so we have a bigger piece of property. The key thing is that we're all farmers, the way, shape, or form, aren't we? But you know what? We all do live here. That's a guarantee. I don't care whether you live in Turkey, England, Germany, Canada, United States, Florida, California, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Newark, New Jersey. I don't care where you live. We're all here. So anything we can each do to make that happen for environmental friendliness and increase the quality of life and increase the quality of the fruits and vegetables and products we eat to help save the drinking water from being polluted by running off of the farms in Lancaster County into the Chesapeake or running off this into pollute the Mississippi or whatever reservoir happens to be draining in the watershed area that we're talking about off our fields. Hugely important. How do we get involved? I appreciate the fact that you're all here today. It tells me and makes me feel good in my heart that you're aware there's a problem. Whether it be in your home or your field, you're aware that we live on the planet Earth and unfortunately we've only got one. I don't think we're all about to go to the moon and start a new, new colony on the moon. Certainly all of us couldn't do that, if, if somebody could. The bottom line is we're all concerned about these things. Well, today, and hence on, through full circle technologies, Jim's in the back, Joe's here, you can take advantage of this by buying okay, $80 for this size. I believe this is 8 might be 16 The bottom line is that you can take advantage of this. You want bigger quantities for your fields? Fine. We're asking you to walk a mile with us to help the planet. We're also endeavoring to say, we've done a lot of testing overseas. You ever been to Turkey? You ever been to the Middle East? You ever been to the steppes of Russia? You ever been to the Garden of Eden? Well, I've been to some of those. Beautiful agricultural grounds. Political, socioeconomic differences. Believability. I can stand here and tell you that the Turkey Inst Standards Institute is like our USDA. A tough group. You don't push anything through in Turkey. But you know what? For us to be able to have Bill in the back, or Frank up here in the front stand up and say, you know, Randall, I tried that on one acre of my watermelons, and you know what? You're so right, it's incredible. You're understating how successful that is. Is that worth something to you all to know that a fellow grower took a step, took a shot, said, you know what, I'm going to sink a couple bucks into this. Try it here. We're asking for your help in some levels for that. We know it works. We've done all the testing. The application rates are right here. The product analysis is right here. The safety sheets, we can give you all that. It's all available, most of which you now have. And you've heard me talk about it. But the concept is, what do we ask you to do is to help us? Okay, you have a yard. You're not in the farming business. You're just an interested people. I see people shaking their heads. Yeah, that's me. Okay, great. Buy a small container. Work with us. Put an order in with Full Circle. Get started in some way, shape, or form for the betterment of your health, for your kids' health, to eat better vegetables out of your garden, to have a healthier flower bed garden that requires less pesticides, etc. To know that your water underneath, oh, you have a well. I hear a gentleman back there waving well. He's got a well. What's going into the well? What you put on the top goes down through the water into your well. Goes down your throat. May go out over your body. 
heard that situation is Timbul. Soars? I don't think anybody wants to go there. Is that extreme? Yes, it is. Are we ready to get there in America yet? No. Do we need to think about it? Absolutely we do. So the concept is that we can help determine and get this thing started. What does that mean to the future of agriculture for you? Well, certainly if we can increase your yields, right off the bat we can probably put more money in your pocket. If we can deal with the concepts of better economic buying, less trips to the field, we've talked about some of these economic advantages all along, the concept is it's more money in your pocket. Does anybody think they're overpaid as a farmer in here? No, boy, everybody's shaking up. That's right, you're not. And why is that? because you work too hard, too long, and too difficult at times, subject to market fluctuations. Is any advantage you can get a benefit? Yeah. But you know what, folks? The best thing about this 